The nervous tension, the butterflies in the tummy, the preparation, everything is set for the first official Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge race of the year. And a guy sitting right next to me that feels none of that. Just a pensive urge to get on with racing. Richard Crail, welcome to Piarks March Access and the magnificent Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge for 2023. Thank you, Darren. Good morning to you and to everybody here at the circuit and watching live on Blendline TV. This is the 4.46 kilometre Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. It's fantastic. These are some highlights and perhaps lowlights for some from the final round of the 22 Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge Australia series battles down into the final corner and this ultimately saw race two declared with Danny Studder tipped into the tyres under the bridge on the run out of MG uh, and that necessitated a lengthy barrier repair. It's the fastest circuit on the calendar in Porsche One Make Racing, indeed in Australian motorsport, the lap record held by Matt Campbell at 1 minute 31.11, set way back in 2014. And of course, Tim Slate, somewhat contentiously perhaps, set the outright lap record just last year in that Brabham BT62. It's a terrific part of the world, and it is a racetrack as if designed for a Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. And there are 24 of them on the circuit for this opening race of a brand new one make Porsche season. Young Marcus Flake, the teenager, goes from pole alongside another teenager. This will be a theme, you'll note. Zach Stitchbury on the outside, Aaron Shields and Marco Giltrap on the second row of the grid. It was a good day for Team Porsche New Zealand. Hamish Fitzsimmons, his first car race coming up. He goes from fifth position for Tech Works, like he blocks him alongside in sixth. Ronan Murphy, yes, son of. G'day to Greg watching in New Zealand. In car 77 goes from seventh, and Harrison Goodman goes from eighth in the second of the Sonic Cars. Caleb Sumich on debut in Porsche Racing, just his third weekend in the car, so not very experienced, goes out of ninth, and Tommy Tapple in the South Australian from P10. Sam Schicken on pole in Pro-Am, just three tenths of a second to David Gregg in second in class, and alongside him and the reigning champion, Brett Bolton, goes from 13th. Tom McLennan struggled yesterday, 14th for McElroy Racing and the McLennan Motorsports entry, Matt Slavin from 15th. Richard Cowan improved, survived a big moment at turn 12, but managed to qualify 16th in his car. Andrew Goldie, the West Australian from 17th, alongside our Class B leader, Lockie Harburg in the Auto House Cover Shop car. Tim Wolfe and Jonathan Glickston in a new car this year for racing to beat FA. Travis Knight, Braden Taylor on his debut. Casper Tresseter, fascinating gent. Had a good chat with him last night, actually, to find out about his background. And then Phil Morris rounding out the 24. 10 laps, three races today, two of them sprints and one enduro later this afternoon, which is the opening round of the Jim Richards Endurance Trophy. And it will be Marcus Flack after a brilliant lap, 131.3 for Sonic in the Rorsch paper entry. His dad, Damien, the whole family here watching on, very proud of this young man who's come back from Europe and Asia racing Formula 4 cars to jump onto the Porsche Pyramid. Tremendous to see so many new names as well, Richard. Nine, not quite equaling the ten that this time last year you were debuted with the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge, but cars look set to go. And uh, just walking through the paddock this morning, really, really good nervous tension about it. Everyone was ready to go. It's Sunday, we've already had Saturday. We've now got three races to get done, as you've just said. So really looking forward to seeing how this takes part. And great to see Pyre giving this sort of event a run as we get ready to go. Flack and Stitchbury on the front row. A new season of Porsche racing bursts into life at the island. The best start of the lot was Marco Giltrap from the second row of the grid. Good launch for the young Kiwi, and he could sail round all of them to the first corner. He does so. Brilliant launch. Lockie blocks him as well from the third row of the grid. It's going to come out of one in second position. So the pole sit is back to third, but he's on the dirty line on the outside of the southern loop, and Zach Stitchbury's going to get down the inside. In the 72, he's now in an arm wrestle with Marcus Flack. What a start, Marco Giltrap, but even better, Lockie blocks him. Jumps himself up four positions already as they run down to Stoner Corner for the first time. On the third row of the grid, Hamish Fitzsimmons, who was right next to Lockie Bloxham, had a horrible start. He's gone back a few spots even off the grid there, so didn't get away nicely. Tough old car for your first time in a uh, Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge race to get off the line. Well, it's first race start, full stop. Full so, stop. yeah, these things happen. He'll, he's got lots He'll get of better at it. Raw speed, no doubt. To the hay shed they go. This is Lockie Bloxham. He's got the pole sitter behind, but Marco Giltrap has cleared out in front. 
Brilliant start for the team Porsche New Zealand, Earl Bamba Motorsport driver. I'm sure Earl is watching on. He's been a busy boy racing at Kyle Army with the Groves in Intercontinental GT Challenge last weekend. Aaron Shields down the inside on Stitchbury. Shields across the Techworks Motorsport this year and going to position he's up to fourth. Stitchbury from the front row of the grid back to fifth. So some big winners and losers in this opening lap of a brand new one make Porsche racing year in Australia. And the big winner so far is Marco Giltrap from one of the most famous New Zealand racing families there is. Flack with a great run up behind, blocks him in the toe on the run down to turn one at 270 kilometres an hour. Flack, of course, joining in what is a long 25 year history now of the Sonic Motor Racing Organisation. Great to see Michael and Maria grow that, uh, that business to, to what it is. Oh, contact between the two on the exit of the southern loop. So Bloxham a little bit wide. Flack got the nose up to the rear bar of Lockie Bloxham's car and there was just a little puff of smoke between them as they traded paint. If you were wondering if Flack has been doing some European racing there, it was right there. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Get on with it, get on with it, get on with it. The 116 weighs in. That's Shields as well now. Aaron's in his second season. Flack with a tighter line, both through turn two and then through Siberia as well. So he's just getting that car into the corner really well. And it opens up the exit for the 78. And while these two are scrapping, it's allowing Giltrap to pull away and build a really nice margin out in front. Is there a move down here at MG? Bloxham has to defend. Only make the one move in defence. So we're very clear on that in driver's briefing this morning. And that was okay. But lap two of a 10-lap race is really early to start blocking your position uh, when clearly the car behind has a lot of car speed. But gee, there's some energy in this pack of youngsters at the front of the field. I tell you what, though. Bloxham has got that experience of a season up his sleeve as to how the Michelin will respond over time. At the moment, Marcus Flack is throwing this car around all over the place. Great cold tyre speed, but will the tyre last throughout the weekend? And they need to maintain their tyres. Two sprint races into the Enduro this afternoon. And the idea is that you need to keep a set of tyres up your sleeve for the long race. So the two sets of Michelins you're allowed to use across the course of a weekend, you want to keep them nice. So use one set for this race and the second sprint a little bit later on. Keep a good set of fresh tyres, rotor tyres for the Enduro. Black's got a clear pace advantage, but they're both catching the leader now. So Giltrap just coming back to this battle for second position. The quickest of them all is Harrison Goodman back in sixth place. He's in the Bob Jane team arts, the bright yellow, that iconic livery for Sonic Motor Racing. But he was in a little bit of clean air the last lap, so that's why he was the quickest of the lot. Great shots coming out of Glenline TV for this opening round of the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. Blocks them now under massive challenge for the first time are on this category oh. and holding on tight. Geez, holding some tight lines with that car. He's starting to think a little bit around. I'm, I'm focusing on the tyre because that's what we focus on here. Shends it down the inside. Does he bring Shields through with him? Oh, and checks up on the exit of the corner and maybe a little front to rear contact. That started on the entry to Siberia because Bloxon's car had a little bit of a wobble as he turned the car in, so it cost him some momentum, and that opened the door for Flack to send one down the inside at MG. Textbook Phillip Island overtake there. So Bloxon now finds himself under heat from Aaron Shields, who's jammed up behind that Michelin rear wing, and he's going to try and go the long way around at turn one. Bloxham's got his covered initially on the entry to one, holds him to two. Oh, oh. Flack off the road at high speed, and he's going to slice across the front of the field at two, and they take evasive action. A little bit too hot, rush of blood to the head perhaps after getting that move done and clear racetrack in front, and it's torn the front splitter off that Sonic Motor Racing prepared Porsche. So from second place, he will be in a world of pain. Bloxham finds himself back up to second, Shields to third. Bloxham Shields, they just uh, checked up ever so slightly there, but so did the cars behind them. They had to break up there, so the momentum was lost by the entire pack there. And we're going to see that as we start to see the second times light up. They've lost the best part of a second. They all just checked momentarily. Bloxham went through, and uh, then we see the uh, uh, car just coming back on safely, but torn off that bottom um, spoiler, that's for sure. Feisty, is it not? How yep. good is this? That's what we've come to wow. expect. Yeah, early days of the season, the Shields tries to look down the inside and that speculator just opened the door a little bit because Blocks have missed the apex by 
a Porsche with, then there'll be an over-under opportunity here. And all this has just been a gift for Marco Giltrap because 0.6 of a second has turned into 2.2 in a race lead. So this young New Zealand teenager gapping away out in front while we follow this battle pack. Second, third is Shield, Stitchbury fourth, Goodman fifth. Ronan Murphy has tacked onto the back of this as well in his number 77 car and Hamish Fitzsimmons not far off the back of them either. Uh, in Pro-Am, it's Sam Shahin leading Brett Bolton and David Gregg. Lockie Harburg leads the way in Class B, but we want to keep our focus on this sensational battle pack for the steps on the podium in this one. Car number 64, Gil Trap at the wheel, reminds me of a 2012 and a 2013. Kane Rose and Richard Musket at their first race is driving away, just getting stamping their authority on the series. Driving away at 2.8 seconds, and there's a swap. Is there? No, there's an iteration. <laughs> We're going to do it at some point. It's a big commitment to go around the outside at turn four. Stone a corner as it is now to get that move done. But he's very wide at Siberia. He's dropped it wide. Lockie Harburg, uh, correction. Lockie blocks him. This is that moment from Adrian Flack. Oof, just dropping the car off. Let's see what the outcome of uh, blocks him running wide. is. somehow managed to hold on, hold on to that position from Shields. Do you imagine firing off at Marcus Flack style there? That was hard work. Oh, Shields ran the outside. This time, can he get it done? He is trying every which way to work his way past Lockie Bloxham, who is resolutely defending his position. That was Flack, who's been into pit lane. Uh, I imagine to put a new front splitter on car number 78, the little plastic strip that sits under the front bar of these cars and creates quite a bit of front downforce. Fight. Half race distance now as we see second and third. We can't see first in the same shot just at this point in time because he is uh, over three seconds up the road. But this is a massive battle. And there is battles actually raging right throughout the field. 23 in P2 at the moment. So Boxham, his corner exit out of the southern loop is pretty good. But the fact he has to defend to cover that line or feel like he has to defend is really compromising his exit out of here. And it won't matter this time because Shields finally gets it down the inside. There'll be an over-under, but it puts Aaron on the correct side for the run into Siberia. Blocks him. Just never say die attitude in this race. Second year of one mate Porsche racing out of the Toyota 86s. Families here. That cooked the barbecue last night, actually, and did a very nice job. Throw it out there. But he surrendered that position and you feel like 116 has got plenty of car speed at the moment and may well be able to drive away now. But the issue for Aaron is that it's 3.1 seconds to our race leader, who, while this has all been going on, has just been setting a really consistent pace out in front, looking after the Michelin tyres and doing his own thing. So Marco should have a little bit in reserve should he need to get on the defensive if Aaron gets to the back of his team Porsche New Zealand car. Stitchbury now weighing in on this battle for uh, what is going to be the last spot on the podium for race one for this season. Terrific season of racing ahead for the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. Nine newcomers here this weekend and they're finding their feet magnificently. Stitchbury now starting to apply the pressure. They have Harrison Goodman ranging up there in that iconic livery as you mentioned there Richard. Being supported by True Grid there as well. So a Bob Jane Team Arts, the Sonic Juggernaut, celebrating 25 years. And then right in behind there is Ronan Murphy in the number 77. Another New Zealander coming over here to raid us for uh, all of the silverware. And uh, looking very, very poised indeed. Right behind there is the 16 of Hamish Fitzsimmons. He's recovered. He went back to about ninth place off the start, started out of sixth, he's into seventh now, so good on him. That's a good fight back, just to put the, the bad start to one side and get on with the race in front of him. And Sam Shaheen continues to lead the Pro-Am class. He's running in eighth position outright, and Class B still led by Lockie Harburg. He's in 17th. See that in the totem, car number 91, cover shop racing entry. So uh, class leaderboard hasn't changed. Brett Bolton is second in Pro-Am, David Gregg third. But all the interest in these Michelin junior drivers, part of this comprehensive Porsche pyramid of motorsport that grabs the youngsters, puts them through their paces in Sprint Challenge, and then the opportunity to jump into Carrera Cup. If you are the top Michelin junior in Carrera Cup, you go to the Porsche Shootout in Europe, 
And if you win that, you get a scholarship into Porsche Mobile One Super Cup, and the pathway goes from there. Talking about the Porsche Pyramid, Tim Wolf has joined us out of the Victoria 944 Challenge, and uh, he's doing it for Pit Lane Clothing here this weekend and per equipment rentals. So we'll see what uh, Tim Wolf gets up to. He's doing a, uh, a terrific job at the moment, down in 16th at the moment. Just hearing Casper Tresida in his first sprint challenge race has had a spin and has continued onwards. Son of Paul Tresida, well-known one-mate Porsche racer. Spent his recent times in this kind of category up in Carrera Cup Asia racing. Also owns the 2019 Bathurst 12 hour winning 911 GT3R, which was the car that finally delivered Porsche an enduro race win at Mount Panorama. It was the only one left in the uh, trophy cabinet in Vice Arc that they hadn't got, and they finally got there thanks to the efforts of uh, there were some other drivers involved. But let's be honest, it was Matt Campbell doing the heavy lifting at the end of that day. And I tell you what, they tried for a long time in the 968 CS. I'd still love one of those oh, cars. You, but, and, uh, you and me too. They, uh, that that was a, a magnificent 12 hour, and they just continue to rack up at Mount Panorama. We have got the fast and flowing layout here of the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit at our absolute command here today. And the Porsches, as you said in your opening marks, remarks, Richard, this place is built for these thoroughbred European sports cars. And what a thoroughbred drive by the driver of number 64. Charges across the line, and we get another lap in the bag. Some good pace at the front. So Giltrap, quickest final sector for him that race. Aaron Shields, last time by set the fastest up of the race. So now he got clear of Lachlan Bloxham. He was able to put his head down and he's closed that margin to under three seconds. But as I said, a bit of maintenance, I think, for Giltrap out in front. Lachlan Bloxham still third and he's got Zach Stitchbury working over the rear bar of the Option Team Navy McElroy racing car. Harrison Goodman having a good run. This is his second season in Sprint Challenge and Ronan Murphy up a spot from where he qualified. Bloxham again having to defend down here. Into turn four, over under perhaps for young Zach, who won his place in this Team Porsche New Zealand program through a shootout that they ran at uh, Hampton Downs, south of Auckland earlier this year. It's been out of the 86 racing series and big wraps. As we uh, watch Richard Cowan having a big moment under brakes down into MG. So Zach Stitchbury, the son of the late great Ashley Stitchbury, who lost aged 30 many, many years ago. It was one of the best talents in New Zealand at the time. So it's great to see that well-known Kiwi racing surname continuing to punch away. Richard uh, just grabbed the brakes there. He was a bit offline, defensive in what was quite a, a busy battle pack on the run down into MG and just half looped his car. So he has lived to fight another day. This is busy. This is very busy. Mixing it up here. Ooh, so what's happened to Hamish Fitzsimmons? Blue, white and red car. Just been gobbled up by David Gregg who's off the road. There was contact between the two and he's going to find the tyres in a big way. So Fitzsimmons had an issue and had dropped a few spots in car number 16. And David Gregg, who's a pro-am runner, was trying to go around the outside and there was contact as they worked their way through turn 11. Come back to that because this is the fight for the final step in the race one podium. And once again, blocks them wearing someone else's final wrap through turn two. Getting the touch in a hurry up there, that is for sure. We're getting pretty game with it now. He's going to have a sore neck after this race, Lockie. He has been under fire since lap one and a little bit wide. Stitchbury with a good run. There's a, a lap car there. I think it was Flack. Just... That was Flack just getting out of the way. And this has just thrown this wide open, so blocks him through. Murphy through as well in the 77. So that's really cost Stitchbury coming out of turn four. And that's, yeah, he's dropped quite a few positions out of that. He was going to try and get one down the inside of Murphy. So the lap car actually caught them out. It was Marcus Flake trying to do the right thing, but unfortunately it's probably cost... Uh, young Zach a few spots. Regardless, out the front, the Gill Trap Group. Team Porsche, New Zealand driver with a famous surname and living up to it in the opening race of a new Porsche season. Well done, Marco Gill Trap. He wins the first Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge race of 2023. The really impressive drive. 
and a brilliant start did the numbers for him. Aaron Shields second and blocks them home in third after a breathless race for the driver of the 23 car. Sam Sheehan in seventh and wins Pro-Am. Brett Bolton second there, Tom Taplin in the middle of them actually. Sheehan beats Taplin to the line, so really good job of the South Australians having a, a good little interstate scrap there. Marco Giltrap came out of the second row of the grid. He led the field basically from turn two for the entire journey. Disappeared off and a very ominous signal to the rest of the field. Here we go again, having a bit of a look at this mid-pack tangle up. So that's David Craig Wright trying to go around the outside. Oh, and just the lightest of contact, but the car's so loaded up through turn 11, it gets the pendulum going and he's backed that in. I hope that hasn't done damage to the rear chassis rails and the engine of the Dakin number 87 car. I think he's actually plucked it out of Oof. the wall and uh, made his way back too. So let's let's hope not. There is a good three three rows of tyres there, so it can be quite a soft touch. And this is Jonathan Glickston running wide at turn one, unseen by us in the race to beat FA, which is Friedrich Ataxia, and doing that in support of the legendary Carl Batson back to tech logo on the back of that car from Porsche Centre Melbourne and then the, the final incident of all of that was what happened with Flack going slowly out of turn four when that battle for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and I think seventh as well all got to him and Zach Stuchbury who was about to make some passes on Lockie Blocks and was running side by side I think just got unsighted a little bit there Daz and was uh, caught out, so he's dropped down to sixth position. But Marco Giltrap, the first winner of a brand new season in this tradition of fast young Kiwis coming to Australia and doing the job has continued. Aaron Shields, that is an outstanding drive. PB result for him in second. Lockie Bloxon fought and fought for third. Harrison Goodman fourth. Ronan Murphy fifth, up two spots from where he started. Zach Stitchbury in sixth. Sam Sheehan wins Pro-Am in seventh in front of Tom Taplin with Brett Bolton second in class and Tom Clennon rounding out the top 10. Wild start to the year, Darren Smith. If that is an indication of what we are going to have for the remainder of 2023, Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge is going to be box office this year. 